Good night, everybody. Just let me know if you guys can hear me, please. I'll start in a few minutes, right? I'll start in a few minutes, right? Um, remember to share the link for uh, this live session, live session, right? Um, welcome to some of the newcomers, right? All right, guys. Uh, good night, everybody. Again, right? Uh, welcome to my third session. All right. Um, for those of you who are, are new, right? Um, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Right. Um, so these sessions, I'm keeping them every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Right. They're going to be 10 sessions in all. So this is our third session. Right. So let's start with some examples here, right? So this session here is specifically based on geometry and transformations, right? Um, if you all understand the format of your exam paper, the third question is usually based on geometry, right? And we have transformations inside here as well. Now there are four transformations that you all need to know for the exam, right? And that is a translation, a reflection, a rotation, and an enlargement right we all need to be familiar with all four of them they can come all as one right all of them can come in one question or we can get part part of them right um so let's have a look at some exam question exam style questions right so i have a quadrilateral here right pqrs uh pq is equal to ps rs is equal to rq right um PQS is 55 degrees and angle QRS is 39 degrees. So we have some angles and we have a shape here. All right. Uh, the first thing we want to calculate, we want to calculate SPQ, right? SPQ. So those of you who know or have an idea how to work this out, feel free to put your answer in the chat, right? We want to work out SPQ. Whenever you guys are given a question like this in the exam, make sure you know exactly which angle they want here. So the angle that they're talking about here, they want to get this angle here. This is the angle that they're looking for here, SPQ. But the thing is, this particular uh, triangle, PQS, it's an isosceles triangle. So if this angle here is 55, it means, now if you notice this length here and this length here, they are the same. So therefore, this angle here has to be 55 degrees as well. So if I want to work out um, SPQ, so SPQ, right is simply going to be 180 that's the sum of the interior angles of a triangle minus 55 plus 55 right so we know two angles are 55 so we can work out the other angle here right so that's going to be 180 minus right and that's going to give us 70 degrees right 
So that answer for this first part here is 70 degrees, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. I saw a lot of people having, um, right? A lot of people got this answer, right? Right, so that's angle SPQ, right? Part two now, we want to get angle RSQ. Where is RSQ now? So again, you need to make sure you know exactly which angle you're looking at. This is RSQ here, right? That's RSQ. Now, how are we going to get that angle here, guys? How you all feel we're going to get that angle? Now, if you look at the diagram, you see that this length here is equal to this length here. Right? So uh, that means that the bottom triangle there is also an isosceles triangle. So if you know this angle here is 39 degrees, right? This angle across here, the one they want us to find, that's this, right? Is the same angle here, right? Those two angles have to be the same. So if you want to get angle RSQ, so if you want to get RSQ, then all we need to do is to say 180 minus the 39 degrees right and we just need to divide that by 2 in order to figure out the angle rsq so that's going to be 180 minus 39 we're going to divide that by 2 and you're going to get 70.5 degrees right 70.5 degrees right right i just seen if anybody got that i've seen some people saying 75 right 70.5 sorry 70.5 yeah all right so yes that's correct all right and the last part here they said state the name of this quadrilateral what do you all think this quadrilateral here pqrs is called what's the name of this Right, I've seen some people saying it's a kite. Yeah, it's a kite. That's essentially what it is, right? It's a kite, right? So the answer for this one here, we're just going to say it's a kite. That's it, right? So that's our first uh, sample question here. This next one here now, we have the diagram shows three trapezia, right? That's a plural for trapezium, by the way. Uh, so we have trapezia. Q and R are images Right, so Q and R are images after P undergoes a double transformation, right? So try to understand what's happening here, right? This here, this P here is our original trapezium. And they're trying to tell us that Q and R are the images of P after um, a double transformation, right? So it's as if we started off at P and then we ended up at the point R. Right after undergoing several um, several transformations here, so the first part describe the describe um, it shouldn't be fully describe fully the single transformation that maps trapezium P onto Q, right? So whenever you guys have questions like this, you have to be careful and you should look at the number of marks that they are giving us for this question. So I have P and I want to move that P to Q. Anybody know what kind of transformation is that? What kind of transformation they talking about it? Right? Some people saying it's a translation. Yeah. You know how you know it's a translation? If you started off with P and you just shifted P in a particular direction, you will notice that the size of your object didn't change. So the size of the object didn't change. You notice that the orientation has not changed because P is facing a particular direction. And if you look at Q, it's also facing a particular direction. So that's a translation, right? But here it is. If you just put translation alone, that is not going to give you all the marks. Eh? So you have to say um, translation. 
right? But you must also specify the vector that is allowing me for this translation, right? So you have to give the vector in order to get the mark. And the vector is given by two numbers. Now, you can do this in several different ways, right? So if I start, let's say we take one vertex of P here, and you need to see how do I get to the same vertex on Q. Now, always remember, you're going to move in your X direction first and then your Y direction. Now, you need to look at the um, how the axes are on this thing here. So you're going to go one unit, two, three, four, five. So you're going five units to the right. Now, since you're going to the right, that number has to be positive. So it's going to be a five here. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're moving seven units upwards to get to that point. So the vector is going to be five, seven. When it comes to the vector, you need to remember that when you move to the right, it's going to be a positive number. If you move to the left, it's going to be a negative number. If you move upwards, it's positive. And if you move downwards, it's going to be negative. So you need to, you need to make sure, not just saying, this is worth usually two marks, right? And you get one mark just for saying the word translation, but you also get the second mark for given what the vector is, right? So don't forget that if they ask you that in the exam, right? Five, seven is the vector, right? Um, next thing we want, we want to know what's the next question. Here? So that's part one, right? The second part, they want you to describe fully the transformation that maps Q onto R. What's the answer for that one? What maps Q onto R? What does that look like? Right? So I've seen a lot of people saying, or most people say in reflection. Now I've seen one or two of my students in this live here, right? So, um, and I see he gave me a wrong answer, right? So be careful, right? A lot of people telling me it's a reflection, right? And I agree it's a reflection. Now when you guys are describing a reflection, this is what you need to remember, right? Um, in a, once you give a reflection, right? you will notice that the size of the object and the image, they are exactly the same, but one is a mirror image of the other, right? Now, if one is a mirror image of the other, you all need to indicate exactly what the mirror line is, right? Because if you just say reflection, you're only going to get one marker. You need to say reflection and you need to indicate the equation of the mirror line. Now, I see some of you all putting the mirror line in your answer here. So let's see. So yes, it's a reflection. Right, so this is part one, and this is part two. And yes, it is a reflection. I agree. Right? But you only get one mark if you see it's a reflection. So it's one mark for that. But you need to indicate what is the mirror line. Right? So the mirror line. So think of the mirror line as that line on a piece of paper so that if I fold the paper, R and Q must line up exactly. So when I fold the paper, this and this needs to line up this and this here needs to line up this here needs to line up with this right now if you want to get a mirror line here the mirror line looks like it's a vertical line right so what i can do when i join these two points here the top of the shape that is actually one two three four five six units so if i divide that line into two right this here is going to be your mirror line this line going on here is your mirror line if I fold the paper along this line here, I'm going to get R and Q to line up exactly. So this, this here is a vertical line. Whenever you guys have to give a vertical line, the equation has to be X is equal to something. What do we put as this something here? You look to see where that vertical line cuts the X axis. It is at minus one. So the mirror line is actually X is equal to minus one. So I saw some of you all give that as your answer. All right, um, that's correct. It is X is equal to what, right? All right. 
So again, this is with uh, two marks as well in your typical exam, right? I know some of you all wondering um, where are these questions coming from. These are my own questions. So you're not gonna find them in a, in a pass paper or anything like that, right? These are my own questions, right? So this is also with about a two marks, right? Now, if you guys haven't done so as yet, please remember to hit like and subscribe and share, right? Share the link to as many people as you, as you want, right? Um, I have been getting a lot of requests for um, classes. Guys, I am no longer um, accepting any Form 5 students in my class, right? That's why I'm doing some of these free sessions. Um, but if you are planning on doing a maths exam, chemistry, physics, and any of those things uh, next year, then you can access or you can join those classes, right? So this is the number here that you can contact. All right, so that's one question here on transformations. Let's have our next look here. So this one here, right? This one here, each interior angle of a regular polygon is 108 degrees. Calculate the number of sides in that polygon, right? Now, a lot of students, they generally right they generally don't know how to answer a question like that right now when you have a sheep right when you have a sheep and let me give you a little example here right let's say i had i'm just gonna put a hexagon i mean sorry a pentagon right let's say we have a pentagon here this is a five-sided figure right now these angles here this angle plus this angle, plus this angle, plus this angle here, plus this. Those are called my interior angles. Now, depending on what kind of polygon it is, right? When you add up those angles, you will get different answers depending on the kind of polygon it is. So for a triangle, if you add up those angles, you're gonna get 180. If it's a quadrilateral, when you add up those angles, you get 360, right? Now, there is also something called an exterior angle, right? So let's say we had, and I'll do a, I use a different color here, right? Right? Now, this is, these are what we call exterior angles in a polygon, right? So this here is an exterior angle. This is an exterior angle, right? Um, we also have this here is an exterior angle, exterior, exterior. Now, when you add up the exterior angles of any polygon, they add up to 360 degrees. So that's something you need to know. When you add up the exterior angles of any polygon, you're going to get 360, right? Now, when it comes to interior angles, though, there's a formula to get the sum of the interior angles. Anybody know what the formula for the sum of the interior angles is? What's the formula for the sum of the interior angles of a polygon? Anybody know that formula? Alright, so some people are saying it in the chat. Some people are saying it. So here's what the formula is. So the sum of the interior angles of a polygon, right, is given by the formula n minus two multiplied by 180, right? And this could be written in a different format as well. But this is the formula here. Now, in this question, they told you that each interior angle is 108 degrees, right? Each interior angle, right, is 108 degrees, right? Is that, um, so let me ask you all a question. So this, this, this formula here gives me the sum of the interior angles, right? So I can write n minus 2, right, multiplied by 180. So that's the sum of the interior angles of this polygon that we don't know. Now, each um, angle, 
they told us it is actually 108 degrees. So you're going to say 108 multiplied by how many angles we have, which is N. And all we need to do now is to solve this equation, right? That's what we need to do. So if I multiply everything on the left side, I'm going to get 180 N minus 360, right? Is equal to 108 N. So therefore 180 N minus 108 N is equal to 360. Right, so 180 minus 108. Right, you're gonna get 72. Right, so this is gonna be 360 here. So, therefore, n is equal to 360 over 72, and that's gonna give me 5. Right. So, the, so we're talking about a polygon that has five sides, right? So that's the answer there. We're looking for a pentagon. I hope that that makes some kind of sense to you all, right? Make sure you know the formula, right? Make sure you know the formula to find the sum of the interior angles of any polygon. And it's simply going to be n minus 2 by 180. That's what it is. Right. Right. So that takes care of this here. Right. That's part A. That's the answer for this one here. Part B now. We have a quadrilateral. Right. A C D E. Right. A C is parallel um, to E D. AC is parallel to ED, right? So we can see that on the diagram based on how, they, how it's drawn. Uh, the point B is on AC. Angle EAB is 110. And what else we have here? Angle ABE is 35. And angle B, CBD is 62. So they give us some angles here, right? And what they want us to work out. Did I put the question here? One second. I just give me one sec. All right. I feel I didn't put the questions in it, but hold on a sec. Let me see if I have it here. Right? So I'm not seeing the questions inside here. So I will put I'll put the questions here, right? So we need to calculate some angles, right? So
these are the angles that we want to calculate here, right? So the first one, we want to calculate angle BED, right? So BED, right, is this angle here. Could you all put in the chat what you think that angle is? What do you guys think that angle is? Right, I've seen some people put in some answers here, right? Uh, so here's what's happening here. So guys, if you notice something here, this line here is parallel to this line. If this angle here is 35 degrees, it means that this angle across here has to be 35 degrees, right? So the answer is actually 35 degrees. And the reason, because sometimes in exam questions, they ask us to give the reason, right? Those are what we call alternate angles right so those two angles are alternate angles so that's 35 degrees right that's 35 degrees right what about angle a b d right sorry that's not that should be e b d my bad right yeah angle e b d right so angle e b d is this angle here what you all think this angle is here this one What you think that angle is there? I've seen some answers here right now you have to think about this carefully right so you know this angle is 35 you know this is 62 right so if you want to figure out this angle here remember this here is a straight line eh? this is a straight line on top here so if you want to get that angle there EBD so E EBD is simply going to be 180 minus we need to add it to the 5 plus the 62 right so when we uh work this out here we're going to get 180 minus 35 plus 62 right and i'm going to get um 83 at least that's what i'm getting here right i'm getting 83 as my angle Right? I'm getting 83 degrees as my angle for this one here. Right? So this is 83 degrees. And what about the last one? Angle EDB. So EDB is this angle here. That one should be easy because you just work out this one here and we got 83 degrees. So we want to work this out here. What's the answer for that one? I see people getting 62. Well, all you need to do for that one here, we it's a triangle. EBD is a triangle. So it's going to be 180 minus, and we're going to add up the 35 plus the 83. Right? So that's going to be 180 minus, open brackets, 35 plus 83. Right? And we're going to get 62 degrees. Yeah, I'm getting 62 as well. Right? I'm getting 62. So that's correct. It is 62. Right? All right. Let's try let's try next question here. All right? So, we have a triangle P here on a grid, right? And they said draw the image of P after it undergoes. So, two things we want to do. 
the first thing we want to do, we want to perform a reflection in the line y is equal to 1. So what you all need to know is what does the line y equal to 1 look like? Because there are some students who are not sure when it's a vertical line or when it's a horizontal line, right? But y is equal to something is going to be a horizontal line, right? It's going to be a horizontal line. So this here is going to be your mirror line. Right? That's your mirror line. This is the line y is equal to 1 here. Right? This is y is equal to 1. And what we want to do now, we want to take this triangle P here and you're going to reflect it. Right? So when you take this point and you reflect that in that line, right? It's actually one unit in front of the line. So therefore the image is going to be one unit behind. So this is where this point should be. We're going to do the same thing for this here. So this vertex here is actually three units in front of the mirror. So therefore, we need to put this three units behind the mirror. One, two, three. So that's going to end up here, right? We do the same thing for this point. It's one unit in front. So therefore, the image should be one unit behind. So therefore, the reflected um, triangle, right, is going to be this triangle here that I'm drawing. Now, please, in the exam, don't use freehand. <laughs> use a, use a, a ruler to do that. So this is called P prime, right? So this here, this represents the triangle that we're looking for here, right? So that's the answer for this. That's a reflection in the line y equal to 1. For the second part here, you want to translate that vector, translate, sorry, that P um, using the vector 3, 2. So the vector is given by 3, 2, right? Now, you need to understand what these numbers mean. Eh? So this number on top here tells you the movement in the x direction so it's a positive number so that's three units to the right right and this second number here tells us the movement in the y direction again that's positive so therefore we have to go upwards so all we need to do right so we can take um let's say let's say we start with this point here right i use a different color so let's say we start with this point here and we want to translate that point using the vector 3 2 you're going to go one, two, three units to the right, and then you're going to go one, two units upwards. So that's, this is where the, um, that point is going to be. You're going to do the same thing for this one here. You're going to go three units to the right, one, two, three units, and then you're going to go one, two upwards. So therefore, this is where this point is going to be. We do the same thing for this point here. You're going to go one, two, three units to the right, and then we're going to go two units upwards. One, two. So this here is where this triangle is going to be located. So this here represents my image in this case here. So this triangle here is your P double prime. Right? So we had to do two things with this triangle. We had to perform a reflection and also perform a translation. Right? Perform a translation. Right. All right, let's see what else we have here, right? All right, so the diagram shows quadrilaterals P, Q, R, quadrilaterals Q and R. So we have Q, we have R. So Q and R are images of P after it underwent two different transformations. So what, what the question is basically saying is that here what? This here is your original um, quadrilateral, but then something happens and it turns into Q. And something also happens and it turns into R, right? So now let's see what are they looking for here now. So they want to know, right? Um, on the grid, draw the image of quadrilateral P. So they want us to do something. So we take in P and we perform in a translation 7 minus 2. So the 7 is telling us we have to move 7 units to the right. And the minus 2 tells us we have to move 2 units downwards. Right? Now the thing is you don't have to translate every single point. Right? So let's start. I'm going to use this bottom one here. Right? And you're going to go 7 to the right. So we start checking. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you're going to go two units downwards. So we're going to go one, two units. So this here represents the bottom of this quadrilateral. Now you don't have to do the exact same thing for all the points. If you know what the general shape of this thing is here, you can go ahead and draw it. So this here will look like this. This will look like this. And then how long is this thing? Three things, three units. So here and here, right? So that here represents my P prime. That's what we're looking at here. So all I've done here is I've performed a translation using the vector seven minus two. So that's the answer for part one. Part two now, we wanna reflect this um, P in the line X is equal to minus two. Now, X is equal to minus two, you have to decide, is that going to be a, a horizontal line or a vertical line, right? So again, let me just borrow this here. Yeah, so we want X is equal to minus two. So guys, when it's uh, X is equal to something, the mirror line is gonna be a vertical line, right? It's gonna be a vertical line. Right? So this here is your mirror line, right? So this is mirror line, X is equal to minus two, right? So now you want to take that um, P and you're going to reflect it in that mirror line. Again, we're going to do the same thing again. Start with the bottom or you can start with any point that you want. And if you notice, this point here is two units in front of the mirror line. So we expect the image to be two units behind the mirror line. So I'll use a different color for this one as well. So this here is going to represent the bottom of this, um, of this quadrilateral, right? Now, all I need to do now, remember, you're reflecting it, right? So therefore, this is what's going to happen. You're going to see this here as the bottom part of it. And then we're going to go three units upwards. So this is here and this is here. So this here represents your P double prime, right? That's a reflection in the line X is equal to minus two. So far, so good. What about this one here now? They said to describe fully a single transformation. So this guy describe fully a single transformation that maps P onto Q, right? So guys, look at where Q is, right? This is P here and this is Q here. What do you all think the answer is for that? What maps P onto Q? What maps P onto Q? All right, I've seen a lot of people telling me it's an enlargement. And you can tell it's an enla enlargement because it's bigger. Q is bigger than Q. Q is bigger than P, right? So it's an enlargement. But, right, there's a lot more you guys need to see. So it is an enlargement, yes. So it's an enlargement. But there are two more things required here. Apart from seeing enlargement, you need to see what is the scale factor. Right? So you need to see what the scale factor is, and that's a number, right? Now, if you look at the lengths of these things here, right? So let's say we look at this length here. Now look at where this length is. It's the diagonal is diagonal of one of your square boxes, right? If we look at it, this corresponding length here, you realize it is twice as large, right? Look at what's happening here. This diagonal is actually twice as large as this. So the scale factor has to be two. I saw some people saying three. The scale factor is two, not three, right? So you're getting a mark for saying what that scale factor is. And we're still missing something. You need to give the center of enlargement. So we need the center of enlargement, right? Now the center of enlargement, 
right, is going to have a coordinate. So we need to figure out what are the coordinates of the center of enlargement. How do we do that, right? So guys, whenever you all have to do something like this, right, when it comes to an enlargement, we have to draw some projection lines in order for us to figure out what, um, what would be the center of enlargement. So here's what you need to do, right? You're gonna have to take your ruler and we're gonna join, let's say we join the top of this quadrilateral here, right? We're gonna join that to the top of the quadrilateral P. So you're gonna come here and you're gonna do this, all right? That's one. Now you need to draw more than one projection lines in order to figure out where this thing is, eh? So let's say we choose maybe this point here, right? And it has to pass through that same point on P, right? Now, I would, if I were you, I'd use more than one line just to make sure that I'm not doing anything wrong, right? So they seem to be passing through a common point so far, but let's draw one more just to be sure, right? Um, maybe the bottom, I draw a line from the bottom here to the bottom of the shape here, right? And you realize, wait a minute, they're kind of passing through, all those lines seem to be passing through this point here, right? That point there where all the lines meet, that's called the center of our enlargement. And that's gonna be given by the coordinate minus eight minus two, right? So you all getting marks for this, eh? Make sure you put this minus eight minus two, right? That's my center of enlargement. So even though you have to describe this, if you just put the word enlargement alone, that is not gonna give you all the marks, right? So you must say what the scale factor is. You must say what is the center of enlargement. Those are things that are required, right? Right? Uh, somebody's asking, how did I get the scale factor? So, what's something here, right? Normally, we would either measure lengths going this way, right? Or we can measure lengths going this way. Those are easy to me measure on a grid like this, right? Those are easy to measure on a grid like this. But this quadrilateral here, right? It doesn't have any vertical lengths or horizontal lengths. It only has slanted lengths. Now, this here, if we look at this here, this slanted length here is the diagonal of one of these boxes, right? So this is a length, let's call that one. It's not really one, but let's call that one unit or something, right? If I go two of them, right? So that's what I'm doing here. In this first um, shape here, this length here is one diagonal. But when I go to Q, I have one, two diagonals. So the scale factor, and how you actually calculate the scale factor, is usually your ratio of your lengths. So in Q, that diagonal length is two. In the case of P, the diagonal length is one, so therefore the scale factor has to be two, right? That's how you work out scale factor. Right, uh, Brandon? That's what we're doing to calculate the scale factor, all right? Let's see what else we want here now. For this third part here now, second part, sorry, we wanna know what transformation maps P onto R. Right? Look at where P is and look at where R is. What do you all think that is? What maps P onto R? Right. Somebody's asking about circle theorem. Uh, we'll do circle theorem uh, one of the later sessions. Right. So I've seen a lot of people telling me it's a rotation. Right. I agree it's a rotation. Right. I agree it's a rotation. If you look at P and R, what you're going to notice is that even though the two shapes are similar, sorry, let me do use the word similar. Those two shapes, P and R, they are congruent. They are identical in all respects. The lengths are identical, the angles are identical. So those are what we call congruent shapes. However, if we look at P and R, you realize that the orientation has changed, right? The orientation has changed. So if we look at this carefully, let's have a look at this. 
right? When you look at P and you look at R, the orientation has changed. So we know it's a rotation, right? It is a rotation, right? I know some of you are saying it's a combination, but it's a rotation. But you all need to specify certain things, right? So the first thing you need to specify, you need to specify if it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. You also need to give the center of rotation, right? So we need to say clockwise or anti-clockwise. We need to give the angle. And we also need to give um, ro rotation. We need to give the angle, right? Clockwise or anti-clockwise. And we need to give the center of rotation, right? Right? So it's a rotation. Yes, you're going to get a mark for that, right? Now, when we look at this here, what is actually happening here is that P, right, is rotating about the origin, right? So if I draw a line here, right, this P is actually rotating this way, right? So it's rotating that way, right? So the angle of rotation here, if you notice here, is going to be 90 degrees. So it is 90 degrees, right? So we're given the angle, and I am saying anti-clockwise, so 90 degrees anti-clockwise. All of this is required for your answer. 90 degrees anti-clockwise. And I must also specify the center of rotation. So the center of rotation in this case is simply going to be the origin. Right? It's being rotated about the origin. How I normally explain this in my class. Think of a, a go to a sheep. Right? And they are tied with a rope on a pole that is stuck on the ground they can only rotate or they can only graze in a circular part that's essentially what's happening here if i take the shape p and i were to tie p to a pole here i can rotate it and it will end up at this point r here right so p will line up with r when i do a rotation of 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin Right. Now, I don't know if you all realize this, but you all can get a construction question as our third question in the exam. Eh? Right. So let's have a look at a construction question here. Now, part one, using a pencil, a ruler and a pair of compasses only construct triangle ABC where BC is six, AB and AC is eight here. Now, guys, whenever you have to do a construction, my suggestion to you is to do a little sketch first, right? Do a little sketch. So we have um, BC. So BC is 6 cm. So you're doing a little quick sketch first, right? Um, AB and AC is 8. So we have a point A here, right? And we have this. We have this. This is 8 cm. And this is also eight here, right? So in our minds, before you even sketch anything, you know what it should look like, right? And based on the numbers that we have here, this is an isosceles triangle we are trying to draw, right? So BC is six, AC is eight, and AB is also eight. Now, if you notice, they want all construction lines. So you have to use your compass and you have to use your ruler in order to draw this, right? Uh, let me see how I'm going to do this here. Let me see. Give me one second, guys. All right, so I hope you all see my screen there, right? So we're going to draw this triangle here, ABC, right? So just for my knowledge here, right? This is what the triangle should look like, right? So we have... A, B, and we have C, 
right? So in terms of lengths, this is eight, this is eight, and this here is six, right? That's what we're trying to construct, right? So if you have to construct this, right? If you have to construct this, you're gonna use your, um, you're gonna use your ruler and your compasses in order to do this, right? Right, so step one, right? If you have a question like this in your exam, you're gonna need your ruler and your compass in order to do this. So you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna, first first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna draw a line that is longer than eight here, right? So, sorry, longer than six here, right? So I'm gonna draw the line BC. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw a horizontal line here, right? And I'm gonna make sure it's longer than six here. Then I'm gonna take my compass right and i'm going to open the compass so that it is actually six here right right so you're going to take your compass and you're going to rest it next to um next to the ruler and you're going to measure six here all right so you're going to come across here and we're going to draw an arc when you guys are doing construction questions cx is looking to make sure that you have an arc here right so I've drawn an arc here right and I'm gonna label this here I'm gonna label this as BC so this is B right and this here is going to be C right so that length there is six here so this here is six C here right right yeah, some people saying they got a one in January exam. Yeah, I have a lot of students who got a grade one in, in January exams, right? Right, so that's my length BC now. Now, the next thing we need to do, we need to draw, right? We have to draw our um, two lengths, AB and AC, which are also eight here. So all you need to do, right? This is how you construct a triangle without any angles. So you're gonna open your compass. You're gonna open your compass so that it's eight cm. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna come to this point B here, and we're gonna draw an arc, right? I'm gonna draw an arc here. Don't need to go that far. Right, so I'm gonna draw an arc here. So from the point B to any point along that arc, it's gonna be 8 cm. Now the line um, AC is also 8 cm, so I don't need to open up anything here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw a second arc here now. Right. So now this point here, the intersection of those two arcs here, that is actually the point E. So this point here is actually point E. So all I need to do now is to take my ruler and I'm gonna draw a line from this here. So we're gonna draw a line here that passes through this point. All right, so that's one line there. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna draw a line from C going this way. All right? And just like that, I've constructed my triangle here, right, ABC. I just need to label these things here. Let's label this as ATM, right? And this one here is also ATM, right? So this here represents my triangle that I was supposed to construct, right? Now let's see what else they want me to do, right? I'm just gonna copy something from the question itself and bring it across, right? One sec. Right, so there's a question here, right? Let's see what else. So they said, uh, draw a line segment AD 
such that AD meets BC, right, at D and is perpendicular. Okay, so we have a lot of words inside here, right? So draw a line segment AD, right? And AD meets BC and is perpendicular to BC. So what they're trying to find, want us to do here, they want us to draw a perpendicular line going down this way. And this point here is going to be our D. That's what they want, right? Now, by the way, according to your syllabus, you have to be able to construct a perpendicular line, right? From a point to another line. So all you guys need to do for this, right? All you need to do, right? That's all. Right, we had a little, a little issue here. Hold on. Alright, no problem. So here's what you're going to do. You need a compass in order to do this. So we're going to place our compass at this point here. Right? And if you want to draw a perpendicular line from that point here, what you need to do, you have to draw. Right? You have to draw an arc so that it cuts the line at two points. Right? That's what needs to happen here. So... You just draw an arc here right so that arc is cutting at two points right now when you do that the next step in the process here is to draw another arc here now, I'm not sure I think you all might be missing piece of this diagram here right but we have to draw a second arc from here to here Right? And now all I need to do now, I just need to draw a vertical line passing through this here. Right? Right? So from the point E, we're going to draw a perpendicular line here. Right? So according to my uh, drawing here, I just need to draw this line here. Right? And that's my perpendicular line. Right? So this is the point D that they're talking about here. This is the point D here, right? That's the point D, right? So we did that, right? We did that piece here. So the next thing that they want now, they want to us to measure the length of the line segment AD. So if you want to measure AD, all you guys need to do is to take a ruler and just measure that length, right? In this case, it looks like about 7.5 around there, right? Um, so they could access the measure length. They also want us to measure angle ABC. So you need a, a, a protractor here to do that, right? And if you want to measure angle ABC, then all we need to do is to measure this here. And that's about maybe 60, 66, 67 degrees around it, right? So this, this is just a sample of what you can get. But yes, construction can come in this particular question. Right? Construction can come in this particular question. Right? Right, so let's try another uh, angle question. Right, let's try another angle question here. Right, so we have a question here where we have the diagram shows an isosceles triangle PQST. Right, PQST. Right, that's PQ. Right, so we have an isosceles triangle here. This should have been just PQT. Right. Now, PT is equal to PQ, according to the diagram. RTS, right, and QTU are straight lines, right? And RTS is parallel to PQ. Now, they gave us an angle there, which is 61 degrees, right? And they want us to calculate the value of X, right? They want us to calculate the value of this X here, 
right? Now, you all have any ideas how we calculate in this value of x? Right, Brandon, you should only start doing papers from uh, May 2018, not January 2018, right? That paper is, um, that's a little different, right? That's from the older syllabus, right? Right, TJ, yeah, obviously that'll give you a great one, right? I'll give you a great one, right? So if you all know the answer for this one here, we wanna work out this angle X here, right? So if you all look at the diagram, you see this line here is parallel to this line. So if this angle here is 61 degrees, it means that this angle here is also 61 degrees, right? So if it, so you know those two angles are 61 and that's because they are alternate angles. Now, the fact that the triangle there, PQT is isosceles, it means that this angle here is also the value of X. That angle has to be X as well. Right? So therefore, if I want to calculate X, X is simply going to be 180 minus 61, right? Divided by two. And that's going to give me my angle here, right? So it's 180 minus 61. And we have to divide that by two and you're going to get 59.5. Right? So I see some people got that, right? So you have to subtract it and you have to divide by two, right? That's how we're gonna get that angle in. Right, so that's how we get X. What about Y now? How we get an angle Y? What you all feel is Y? Right, so I see one or two people telling me the answer for why. Uh, let's see if that's correct. So here's the thing. You see RS, this line here, is a straight line. QTY is also a straight line, right? Now, there is something called vertically opposite angles, right? So let me draw QU, right? So this here is Q and this is U, right? And this angle here, or this line here, sorry, this is R, S. We want to calculate Y, right? So when it comes to the geometry, this angle here, right? This is Y here, but Y is also equal to this angle here, right? Those are what we call vertically opposite angles. So if you want to get angle Y, angle Y is simply going to be 61, right? Plus the 59.5. That's all, right? So this is gonna be 59.5 plus 61, and you're gonna get 120.5, right? That's 120.5, right? So well done, some of you all actually got it correct, great. Right? Right, so we could get angles involving parallel lines or we can get questions involving polygons. And what they also bring in in the section here as well, they bring in some questions on Pythagoras' theorem as well, right? So I have a triangle here, ABC, right? Um, it's an isosceles triangle, right? This length is 12, this is 20. And if it's an isosceles, it means that this length here is also 12 here, right? and I wanna calculate the length each, right? So whenever you guys get a question like this, right? If you look carefully, what you really have here is a right angle triangle. So this is A, this is B, right? This is 12, right? That's 12 cm. Now, when you drop a vertical line here, right? 
what you're doing here is dividing the length BC into two equal parts. So if this is 20, it means that this here is going to be 10. And we are asked to find the length each. So I normally don't tell my students to learn off Pythagoras' theorem. You need to understand how to use Pythagoras' theorem, right? Um, so check this. So if you want to use Pythagoras' theorem, Pythagoras' theorem says, here what? This is a 90 degree angle here. So therefore the 12 is my hypotenuse. Now if I square the other two sides and I add them up, I should get the hypotenuse squared. So you're going to write this as 8 squared plus 10 squared is equal to 12 squared. So therefore each squared is equal to 12 squared minus 10 squared. So this is going to be h squared is equal to 12 twelves are 144 minus 100. So therefore h squared is equal to 44. So h is equal to square root of 44. So therefore h is equal to about 6.63. Let's say 6.6, .6, right? So that's our height. So just make sure you understand or know how to use Pythagoras' theorem because that could also come as your third question in your exam paper, right? Let's have a look at another transformation question here, right? So we have three triangles, A, B, and C. Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. What do you all think that is? We have triangle A and we have triangle B. What do you all think that is? Based on everything we've said so far, what is that? Um, Ross is asking if you leave your answers root 44. I would suggest you work it out, right? Put down the value for that. Don't leave it as a square root unless we need it somehow. All right, a lot of people say an enlargement, right? So it's looking like an enlargement, right? Because if you look at this triangle here and you look at this triangle here, you realize, all right, well, one of them is bigger than one, right? So those are what we call similar triangles, right? That's what we call similar triangles. Now, let me see if you guys correct about what we need to say. So again, so this part E, right? So it is uh, an enlargement. So you need to say that. Right? Yes, that's only part of the answer, right? You need to see what is the scale factor. So the scale factor key, right? Now, in this case here, we have lengths which are easy to measure. So key, so triangle B is the enlarged triangle. So all you need to do is to measure this length here. And based on the grid, it's four units. So it's going to be four divided by, look at this length here. This is two units. So it's going to be four divided by two. So the scale factor is going to be two. That's what the scale factor is. But we also need to know what is the center of enlargement. Now you can't do it here, but I can. Center of enlargement. Now the center of enlargement is going to be a coordinate, right? So to do that, I need to draw some construction lines on this thing here. Right? So what you would do in the real exam, you're going to take a, take a ruler, right? And you're going to draw some lines, right? So all I'm going to do here, I'm going to join, let's say, this point to this point, right? So we're looking at the tops of the triangle. Then I'm going to say maybe this line here. Now the thing is, because it's a triangle here, right? <laughs> it's going to intersect, yes, but it's going to intersect here. We can only draw two lines, right? We can only draw two lines. So the center of enlargement is going to be this point here, which is going to be 6 minus 5. Right? So this here is 6 minus 5. Right? So we need to make sure that when you're describing an enlargement, you need to say enlargement, you need to say the scale factor, and you need to say this. 
pay attention to the amount of marks you're getting in the exam. It's plenty, right? It's plenty. Right? So that's part E. What about part B here? They said describe the single transformation that maps triangle E onto C. We all feel like this. What kind of translation is that? What kind of translation is that? Right, I've seen people saying rotation, right? So remember, when it comes to rotation, so if you look at triangle E and you look at C, you realize something has changed. Even though the size of the triangle is the same, the orientation has changed. That's how you know it's a rotation. The orientation changes, right? So we know it's a we know it's going to be a rotation. I agree, it is a rotation. But just like the previous questions here, there are certain things we need to see. We need to actually say what is the angle of rotation. We need to say whether we're going clockwise or anti-clockwise, right? And we need to see what the center of rotation is. Now, um, let me see if I could do something for you guys here. I'm going to show you a little trick here that you could do in the exam, right? Um, let's not. Let's give me one sec, right? I want to pull something up here and I want to show you what you could do in the exam. All right, um, let's see, close you off. Right? So I hope you all see my screen there, right? I hope you all see my screen there. So let me show you a little trick that I normally tell my students to do, right? So if you know it's a rotation, right? You need to figure out the center of rotation, right? Based on what I'm seeing here, it looks like it could be the origin. So what I will do, and you could do this to check, take a compass, right? Place the pointy part at where you think the center of rotation is. So if I think it's the origin, start there, right? Now take the compass and touch it to one of the vertices here. Right? So if it's a rotation, this is what's going to happen. When I rotate this, right? When I rotate this, it's going to line up exactly with one of the points here. So it's a little off, but it's around the same point here. Right? So I know that my center of rotation seems to be the origin. Now we can test it with another point as well. Right? Now you don't, you don't need to draw all of these lines on your diagram. Yeah? i just doing this so that we could i'm just trying to show you how to calculate or determine the center of rotation without doing a set of construction right right so let's say we pass through this point right let's see if it passes through one of the points of the triangle right yeah so it kind of passing through one of the points of the triangle right so therefore the center of rotation is going to be the origin right so the center of your rotation is going to be zero zero now, if you want to work out the angle of the rotation, right? All you need to do, this is what you need to do. Draw a line from the center of rotation to any one of the points, let's say here, right? So I'm drawing a line here, right? And the corresponding point on the image, we're going to draw a line there as well. So that's going to be here, right? But if you notice something here, if that's a rotation, what it really means is that this E is really rotating this way at an angle of 180 degrees, right? So what we could say here, we can say 180 degrees, right? Now 180 degrees clockwise or anti-clockwise is the same thing, right? So we're just going to say 180 degrees, let's say anti-clockwise. Right? And that's it. That's all we need to say here in order to answer this question right 
I hope that makes some sense. Uh, yes, that is true. Somebody saying about transformations could be enlargement. It could be a translation. It could be a rotation, right? All of those things fall under the word transformation, right? That's what it falls under. Right? So let me just do this last piece for you guys here now. So this last piece here, so we did part A, part B. Part C now, we wanna translate E using this vector here, two five. So the vector is two five, so that means you're going two across and five up. So if we take this point here, and we go two across, that's gonna be here, and then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. So this here represents the bottom of the triangle. So based on the orientation of E, I know that the next point should be here, and then we should be three units up here. So therefore, this triangle here is what they're looking for, right? This here represents a translation by vector two five. That's what they want, right? So that's part C. The next thing they want, they want us to reflect triangle A in the line X is equal to three. Now remember, I told you guys, you need to know if I, if I tell you a line is X is equal to three, right? you need to know if it's a horizontal or a vertical line. So for a line x equal to three, right? That is actually a vertical line, right? So this here represents the line x is equal to three. That's this line here, right? And if I wanna reflect triangle E in this line, then all I need to do, right? That's here, here, and up here. So the triangle that we're looking for will be this. This represents my reflection in that line x is equal to 3. That's it. Right? Nothing fancy. That's all we need to do. Right? All right, guys. So that's as much time as I have for you guys this afternoon. Right? That's as much time as I have. Um, so just remember, guys, continue practicing. You have some time before between now and the exam. Continue practicing questions. There are lots of solutions out there online. Right? Um, so please remember to hit like and subscribe, right? Um, don't forget to share, right? As best as you can, right? So guys, that's it for me. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Be safe. And I will see you guys next week Wednesday when I'll be focusing on question four, which is um, relations, functions, and graphs, right? That's question four, right? So next week Wednesday at eight o'clock, guys, right? That's when it is.